Hey class, this is Adam Ward, and I wanted to work through the problem for rigid body motion that we uh, had in your course packet for lecture uh, 7, I believe. Uh, and in this example, we've got a tank of water that's rectangular, uh, and the tank begins to accelerate at 3 meters per second squared to the right. The problem is to find the depth at each end of the tank and the resultant hydrostatic force acting on each end of the tank. And so to do this, we can write two equations, one describing how our pressure changes in the x direction, uh, and that's as a function of the fluid property density times the acceleration in the x direction. Uh, and in the z dimension, we've got the z-directed acceleration plus um, our usual acceleration due to gravity. And so these two equations can be combined to describe uh, dz dx, or how that water surface profile will actually look and the water surface profile looks like the ratio of the x to the z directed accelerations. So we'll define a couple of terms here. Um, HL and HR tend to be the height of water at the left and right hand side respectively. And just a reminder to you that um, the at rest depth of water in the tank is 1.2 meters. So when this tank is actually accelerating, um, by symmetry, everything that goes down on the right-hand side will go up on the left-hand side. Um, it's sort of like rotating a flat plane, and the center of the tank will still have a depth of 1.2 meters. So this is a, the symmetry of the problem. So given the equation that we know and the accelerations, um, we can assume there's no other z-directed acceleration since we're not given any. Um, we can find that the slope of the water surface profile is minus 0 0.306 meters per meter. And so now we know something about the geometry of the problem. Um, we still don't know the height at the right or left hand side of the tank, uh, but we can get there. Uh, if we consider uh, what happens between the center of the tank and the right hand wall, uh, dz dx could also be represented as the difference in z divided by the difference in x. and we can put some numbers to this. So the height on the right minus 1.2 meters at the center and the distance of 1.5 meters between them on the bottom. Um, and we'll set that equal to the known value for dz dx, the minus, zero, the minus 0 0.306 meters per meter. And if you go through that, I solve for a height on the right hand side of 0 0.74 meters. Now from here it's applying fluid statics as always. Resultant force is equal to specific weight times the height to the centroid on the right uh, times the area on the right-hand side. So I'll put the numbers to that here, and the specific weight of water is just coming from a lookup table in the front of the book, um, standard fluid property. So I calculate a resultant force acting on the right-hand side of the tank of 4.02 kilonewtons. Uh, one thing to notice here is I've gone ahead and done the conversion from newtons to kilonewtons uh, just to make the numbers a little bit more tractable for this problem. Now, on your own, I'd encourage you to try an, a similar analysis of the left-hand wall to the center of the tank. And there are two ways that you can go about finding the height on the left-hand side. The first is the same approach that we used from the center to the right, um, so repeating that calculation to the left. Um, the second approach is to realize that uh, there's a symmetry to the problem, so that if the right-hand side goes down by 0.46 meters, the left-hand side must go up by that amount. Uh, either way, you ought to find a left-hand height of 1.66 meters. And using your hydrostatics equations, you can calculate a force on the left-hand side of the tank of 20.25 kilonewtons. And so here you can see that um, the left the force directed to the left is five times larger than the force to the right in this case. Uh, and for comparison, I also wanted to just calculate what this would be at rest. And using our standard hydrostatic force equation, I came up with a value of 10.6 kilonewtons that would have been acting on either side of the tank um, when the fluid was at rest. So by accelerating that tank, we've doubled the maximum force that the left-hand side is going to feel um, and we've significantly reduced the forces on the right-hand side. From a design perspective, it's that maximum force to the left that we're most likely concerned about. Also realize if this is, um, as I've conceptualized the problem, perhaps a tank in the back of a truck, 
uh, when you stop the truck and you have a negative acceleration in the x direction this problem will reverse and you'll now have the same 20.25 kilonewtons pushing on the right hand side if you also decelerate at 3 meters per second squared. I hope you find this video useful. Thanks.